have more friends that were in recovery or friends that didn't drink and, and whatnot. But I don't really, at the end of the day, I'm okay with where I am and I'm okay having friends that do drink. I'm okay having friends that don't drink mm-hmm. like yourself. I made a new friend that doesn't drink tonight. Yeah. Do you think you could date someone that wasn't in recovery? Yeah. You could. So yeah. you could date someone that drinks and it wouldn't be a pressure I mean, to you. For me, I've been to the bar. I can go to the bar and it doesn't bother me to be around it. I, yeah. kn- I know what I can and can't do. I know I really don't go to bars and stuff like unless I have a spiritual reason to be there or like what what would be a spiritual reason to be there um like I went to the bar to Barney's because it was all my class graduating from nursing like a good reason okay where I'm not going because I want guys to see me I'm not going because I want to be around alcohol which I just don't yeah I don't know um like I have a reason uh, like a good reason to be there right i mean right i feel like when i i've gone to the bar many well i wouldn't say many like a handful of times since i stopped drinking mm-hmm. and every time i go there um i mean i just i don't get it like i look around <laughs> and i'm like why 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 did i spend so much time here no i know and money like, yeah time money and then like i I kind of timed it too, and, and some of the people I was with, I'm like, okay, they repeated the same story. It's like eleven o'clock. They told me the story at nine o'clock. They're starting to repeat the story. Was I the guy that repeated the story ten times before the end of the night? I, know. I probably was. I just think about these things, and I'm like, how many times did I embarrass myself? Yeah, and how many stupid things did I say? Try that I thought were cool at the time. Yeah, yeah. Don't. That's that's one of the things. And then the music got louder as the night progressed. Mm. And people started talking in your face to be heard, and so mm-hmm. saliva was getting. No wonder, mm-hmm. no wonder I got sick so much. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, and like I find, like I don't mind like Barney's or like a sit down bar. Yeah. But like, if you want me to go to like Jack's or something where it's like, is that tough for you? By the way, like just, no, 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 no. It's just like annoying. Like I can't. I I'm a people person i like to be around good energy and i can talk to people i don't want to be in a place where i can't talk because like right. people are just drinking and not talking and i'm like hey, yeah this is not weird <laughs> right like i don't know does when you say like go back to jacks does that bring back any kind of like traumatic like jacks itself wasn't the problem it was this guy that put like was it this guy that put it in your drink or do you think it was a bartender how do you think that was i mean i mean i would assume this it was this guy seeing as he's done the same thing to another girl. Yeah, and he's not a bartender at the bar, is no. he? No. Okay. But so the bar itself doesn't have any triggers for you. Um like, is it For tr- me, I really try and block that it ever happens still. Like I've right. I've seen counseling about it. But Do I they don't... say that that's a healthy thing to do? Or... I mean everyone copes with it in different ways, Absolutely. I say. Yeah. But I, I I mean I just try and not think about it. And I try and like at the end of the day, I, if I'm a logical person, I can realize, you know what? I didn't ask for that. It's not my fault. I'm no right. less of a person. Yeah. And it doesn't define me. But I mean, it still hurts. Sure. <laughs> it's Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's probably one of the most violating things that could happen, right? Yeah. If not the most violating thing. And like I know how to like deal with those emotions now. Like if you would have told me a year ago that I would have found out who this person was, I would have been so messed up that night. I would have been like, yeah. or like I would have used that as a use, reason to drink or something like that. Like the fact that I was able to go through finding out who raped me sober is a miracle in itself. Yeah. No and like, I wouldn't be able to do that if I didn't have recovery, if I didn't have CA, the big book and the support that I do have. Yeah. Good for you. How is your friend now that like that kind of pointed out who this was? Is um, she doing okay? She's had a rough, rough go. Absolutely. Um, he's done it to her twice, actually. Twice. She's been trying to go through try like a trial with him. Really. But I think it ended, and he's fine. He's gone off on his way. Fuck sakes! Oh my god, that's Damn. terrible. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. Starting to get heated again. <laughs> anyway, um <laughs> we won't dwell on that. I know you don't want to really go back there, but I appreciate you having the courage to talk about that and uh and everything you've gone through. And you're twenty two years old, you're sober. 
I wish I had the insight that you have now <laughs> when I was your age because I went through a hell of a lot more of it. Mm. So what's the plan for the future for you? Well, let's talk uh, about everything you've learned and where you're taking it. Um, I do. Like I said, I'm finishing nursing December and I would love to specialize in mental health and addictions. Good for you. Definitely needed. Doing my master's in nurse practitioners to specialize more in a certain that certain area. But that's my passion, community health and public health. Yeah. I don't know. I I just I no one has ever helped me with my eating disorder, my addiction, like someone who's been there. Right. And I can say that for a fact I've been to countless therapists and like pro- through programs and medicated yeah. and all these things and nothing has helped me like another person who's been there and can really share the feelings and the experience that you go through through these things. Right. I absolutely agree with you. And that's why I love having this <laughs> because I mean, I can relate to you on, I, I mean, obviously I'm not drinking. I've been sober. We can relate on that level. Um, mm-hmm. Anxiety, depression. I can relate to you on that level. But until you've actually felt it and you've heard it from someone that's gone through, there's some kind of like an instant connection that's made with everyone mm-hmm. that kind of sits in front of me if we have something in common like that. And if yeah. we don't, I mean, I'm still blown away by certain things I hear, like your story tonight, certain parts of it blew me away. But I, I'm, I think that it's very effective sharing what works for, for one individual, hearing their story and letting someone out there, you know, potentially change their life from it. We don't, mm-hmm. we might not even know. And that's using social media and using the power of the internet for, for good, really, mm-hmm. because see. you already talked about the Instagram problems, right? Mm-hmm. So what do you think we're up against the next little while with this social media and, and everything that you've gone through? I mean, I think it is so toxic. I've, I like what you said, and I've heard that they're already creating a mental illness around social media and all that. And I remember like personally, I remember growing up and girls were cruel. They weren't nice. Right. And like add social media into the mix and like the editing and all this stuff. Like I, I look still sometimes like I'll look at these girls on Instagram and their bodies are just perfect. And like, I mean, sometimes I have to literally like sit back and be like, Hey Lauren, they have angles, Photoshop, editing, all these things like right. chill out yeah. you're human you you don't need to live by a diet you don't need to live by an exercise program are you happy with yourself are you yeah. a good person and like just humble myself to the basics of what really matters in life yeah and you know what else though just to add to that mm-hmm. um i've had a lot of bodybuilders and people in the <laughs> fitness industry on here and a lot of those women there are, people don't think that they think it's the guys that are just taking shit. No, those women are taking, you know, just as much and sometimes more, mm-hmm. um, whether it's supplements over the counter that aren't great, that aren't great for you. But a lot of the shits steroids are illegal too. Right. So, mm-hmm. um, I mean, that's, that's a conversation that I'd love to have. There, there are a few women that will come on, I think soon enough and talk about that. And I think that'll be really interesting mm-hmm. because how many of these Instagram models you know, are, are, are not telling you the full truth about what they're doing to look like that. Mm-hmm. Right. And so. like, there's many times where I think like, like I've taken countless fat burners, all these things. And it's like, I would love to do those things, but at the end of the day, I know it's wrong. Why do you know it's wrong? Because it's, it's not like a sustainable thing. It's like a band aid fix for what's really inside of me. Right. Like I obviously it's like, I'm always going to have an eating disorder. Okay. It's, it, it's something I'm going to live with. I, it don't, doesn't break me down like it used to. Yeah. But, I mean, it's still there and it's still, it's still, there, there's days where it is really hard. Do you still, um, do you still find yourself having a tough time? At one point you said you thought like you couldn't even really look at food, right? Or couldn't eat food. You had a tough time yeah. doing it. So how do you deal with that sober? I mean, it's a bit easier because I'm not drinking so many calories. Okay. Um, <laughs> but that thought process still happens? Oh, yeah. Really? So you still look at food and does that automatically kind of... Like a lot of times I'll look at food and I'll be like, you know, like, that. look at that as that much fat, carbs, and like the protein. Like, I should stay away from that and like that. But, but like, I let myself live now. Like, I right. try and eat healthy, but like, if we're having pizza, I'm all for it. Like, right. it's... 
life goes on and it used to be like the breaking point of me like if we ha- if someone said we're having pizza no i'm going to starve myself i'm not eating that right and i mean it's, it's not easy but it's like i i have the ability to cope with it right and to realize that you know like it's okay yeah i'm allowed <laughs> absolutely you are <laughs> fuck i mean so there's so much pressure being put and a lot of this is social media a lot of this yeah. is the fact that uh we as a society raise up these swimsuit models and you know these gym addicts and things like that Mm -hmm. and that's how we're all supposed to look but really at the end of the day it's just to sell whether it's magazines or supplements in those magazines that make these people look this way it's still a fucking business Mm -hmm. anyway i don't know maybe i'm wrong who knows no you're right (laughs) thank you um messages for anyone that's going through the same thing you seem very wise now for a 22 year old (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And I think that happens with people that have been sober. I think that everybody should take one year off of drinking and just see how their life yeah. is. Maybe hit re- up chapters, big book of Alcoholics Anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just read try it. it. <laughs> I'll read it, sure. But I like yeah. That's one way to do it if you can't if you can't do it on your own, definitely. Mm-hmm. But I think if you if you are at a point where you can do it on your own, just maybe start meditating or start and I wanted to ask you about that too. Start meditating, start doing healthy, start doing CBT, whatever. Mm-hmm. But um, what do you do for meditation? You said you said something about meditation earlier. What do you do? Um, I pray. Pretty you much. Pray, so I pray to my like, higher power. That's what you consider meditation? Yep. Okay. Daily meditation, morning and night, or if I'm struggling. <laughs> right, just in the middle. Do yeah. you ever just try breathing and like kind of anchoring yourself and listening to your breath? Yep. I mean, I love yoga. I love, I don't do it very often, but yeah. like... Me and my mom sometimes will oh, that's cute. throw on a meditation tape and fall asleep in five minutes. But, I mean, we try. <laughs> yeah, sure. A guided meditation? Yeah, yeah. We right love on. those. Yeah, I know a lot of people that that helps put them to sleep. It's better than sleeping pills. Yep, way uh, better. Absolutely. So last messages for anyone that uh, is going through something similar. Um, Don't be afraid to reach out to me, to anyone. Okay. Don't be afraid to get help. It's okay to not be perfect. It's... I mean, there's so much help out there and support and nobody, I mean, you don't have to be perfect and no one ever will. No be. one is perfect. Yeah. And I think as we grow up, we realize that like we all struggle in our own ways Yep. and there's less criticism and just like accept the help that's there because people right. love and care about you and you need to, and at the end of the day. I mean, what's really important in life? Is it how you look? Is it being at this party? It's being a good person, feeling good about yourself. Right. And putting those things first just puts your whole life in a different perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's very, very insightful. I appreciate that (laughs) advice. And I will take that as well. Um, and, And I really think that's you hit an amazing point. No one will ever be perfect. So strive to be your best in certain ways. That's not a bad thing to have goals, but healthy goals, right? Yeah. I mean, it's all about balance and make sure you're doing things for the right reason. Absolutely. Right? Mm-hmm. So it's all about love. Mm-hmm. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in this evening. This is our second Woman Crush Wednesday. <laughs> Lauren Benson. <laughs> yes. Thank you for coming and thank you for sharing your story and being so brave. And uh, I can't wait to see what the future holds for you because I think that you're going to be a powerhouse helping people. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> so we're going to uh, tag your name in this. Mm-hmm. And hopefully um, we can have people reach out to you that Absolutely. might, might uh, be able to share your story. Of course. Or share your, have that con- have that in common. You know what I mean? Yeah, of course. All right. That's <laughs> it for tonight, folks. We will see you again on Sunday for Soul Fire Sunday. Where the boys talk mental health some more. Okay, we'll see you then. Bye-bye, guys.